there. In today's exciting episode, we are out here because we can't be in there. The plaster is busy, so we decided to come out to the garden and build plant boxes. Morning. How are you guys? So Jess, mm -hmm. watch your step. Don't fall off that. You don't need another rolled ankle at a silent disco situation, Scott. Yeah, that's, that's a good point. What are we going to put in the garden box? Soil? Look at that. sleepers. That'd be expensive. Oh yeah. Well, probably $109 for one. This is what we want. Much cheaper. <laughs> yeah. So this is a redwood sleeper and the reason we're choosing redwood is because it is naturally resistant to the elements. It doesn't have gross treatment in it. That we, we don't need to worry about that contaminating the garden. Sorry I'm late mate. Hey, you right. Couple of uh, slim lines for you. Nope. I'll just pop them uh, against the wall here. Plaster continuing. We've uh, finished the laundry, so he's able to plaster that now while we build these planter boxes. Oh, wicked. Redwood. Redwood. So yeah. it's not treated or no. anything? Not treated. No. Natural. Perfect. <laughs> I'm like an NPC. Every other time we want to do, I just go back to my programming, which is to weed. I'm not an NPC, Scott. So, <laughs> what we have here is the original veggie garden, which is very much uh, organic in shape, which we like. And in between that veggie garden and this big tree over here is where we want to put the planter boxes. The actual space that we've got to work with here kind of is limited by this, the start of the bark, I would say. I think we just center it. What do you think? I got 2.8. Mm. So 1.4. That would be where it sits. From there to there. Ah, oh, isn't that, that's way too narrow. I thought we didn't want such a narrow passageway. So this is, yeah, this is what it would be like. Are you sure what you had lying on the ground was way smaller than us? No, no, it's all perception. It's all perception. Yeah, look, that's right. 0.9. And this is approximately how high they'll be, eh? Uh, good question. So we made it four rows. That will be 800, which is just above this. So 100 mil above this. If I have to reach. So it'd be a bit higher. Yeah, that's, I mean, I could probably go a little bit wider, but then we're using way more timber and it's gonna cost even more. So we should just stick with this. So anytime we're building stuff outside, uh, we do it with houses, we did it with a deck, uh, we put these pegs in place to hold our string lines, and then the string lines will give you a visual idea of where the thing you're building will be in relation to the landscape, and that gives you a chance to get things parallel to fences or square off houses, for example. Sorry about the wind. So in this case, we are kind of going parallel with this planter edge across here. Here's a question for you. Yeah? Do they have to be perfectly straight? That helps. But do they... But do they have to? No.
Are you putting a chamfer on a pig? No, I'm making a pig. See, a chamfer is when you plane the top up there. But that's a great idea. Oh my god. So a chamfer is when you put a little angle all the way around like that. So the water drains off? No, so when you hit it with the pig, it's less likely to split. Because if you hit the edge, that's when it's most likely to split. So Scott's best mate, Josh, who we did his apprenticeship with, told me a story that when they were working together during their apprenticeship, he knew Scott was fussy when he caught him putting chamfers on pegs for marking out. For, yeah, concrete formwork. And he said that that's when he knew Scott was over but the top. That, that, okay. Extra. That is over the top, and I wouldn't... Rec like, if I had someone working for me and they're doing that, I'd probably be like, you don't need to do that. But, you know, like having like things like this, doing, mm -hmm. making sure it's all straight. Mm. It, like when you have good habits, then mm. you have good results. Mm. I agree. But now when Scott's being over the top and too fussy, I like to say, shame for a pig. That could be a t-shirt. <laughs> As a reminder. <laughs> all right, let me finish the pigs then. This is the deepest circular saw I have, and I've just come to the realization that it's still not deep enough. Are you kidding me? What, like two mil out? That is so annoying. <laughs> I have a feeling that these planter boxes are going to be a challenge to your um, particularness. I think I need a chainsaw. That's what we have to do, every cut. So the first thing to do is to screw this thing together. Whoa, that's a lot of water. Why is that? It's just uh, all the moisture that's in the timber being compressed. That all that space that the screw takes up is the moisture has to go somewhere. It comes up the head. So now that it's like a unit, I guess you could call it, you can kind of lift it up and get it, oops, get it nice and level with some packers, just for the time being. So you want to do this uh, after the first row screw together rather than waiting until you've got a big box that's very heavy. Now they are just planter beds, you don't really have to make them dead level like this, but because they're rectangle structures, I feel like if they're level, out of level and there's two of them connected like this, you're gonna see it, start going like that. So I want it nice and level. So these are two parts of what is going to make up a sash, a window sash. It was made by a local joinery company. How nice is that? And what doesn't come across is how beautiful it smells. Now I was warned to not completely push this joint in because I'll never get it out. That's how perfect the joint is. But uh, yeah, before the end of today I need to glue this thing up. <laughs> Yeah, that's tight. This looks great, by the way. Well, does it? Yeah. I find the color of this stuff really confusing. Confusing? Well, because it looks like it our H. Me more. Oh, I've got them here. It looks, it like, looks like H1.2. Treated timber, yeah. Yeah, it looks like treated timber, and I've become so used to seeing the pink color as, like a as a warning sign. 
Yeah. You know, like, oh, no, no, that doesn't go anywhere near food or whatever. That, it's really hard for me to look at this pink and not think it's toxic. Bit more. Oh, too much. <laughs> You're gonna have to define a bit more. <laughs> You gotta keep the pressure on it. More. Oh, push it down more. Yeah. yeah. How how do you know what point to push it to? Um, well, I was looking at the gap. So that was it still had a gap in between. Yeah. And when you did that last little tweak, it tightened it. So that's what we're trying to do, we're trying to tighten the gap. Little things like that, someone who's been doing this for 20 years? No. I'm um, in 18. the 20th year now, yeah. Gosh, really? Yeah, I'm getting off. That's so interesting. For well, the water? Yeah. So crazy, yeah. It's like you're milking the tree. <laughs> So I was screwing in this long screw and then it just stopped abruptly. Can't screw it in anymore. And the reason for that is, look at that, big fat knot. So that's obviously a break in the grain where the timber gets a lot more dense. Not only can I not screw it down, I can't take it out. So it's just jammed in the knot? Yeah. That's crazy. It's not ideal. <laughs> All right, here's the last resort. The neighbors giving you some much needed moral support. Absolutely. One more row. So this is where the pegs come in, the pegs that I prepared earlier. We want something that keeps the box in its location relative to the garden. This wind is insanely strong, so I hope you can hear me. We leveled the first row, but now that we've chucked everything on top of it, we want to level it off and make sure it sits level. So these pegs might rot out. I don't really know what redwood is like in ground. But by the time it has, this box would have been sitting here for a while. All the soil would have formed around it. And honestly, I don't think it's anything to worry about. Even with the chamfer, it still splits. Ah. Now the other thing the pigs can do is hold that top row and prevent me from having to screw down through the top.
if you bump the edge of or the corner of this it's more likely to break off if it's a sharp edge if you take off that corner with a chamfer it's just like the peg you take off the corner with a chamfer it's less likely to break it's a method to my madness jess you did a chamfer on a peg maybe where's the peg they're on the ground there oh the other pegs yeah Scott Brown, shame for the pig. Yes, this exciting episode is brought to you by Squarespace. Squarespace is a website building platform that will help you stand out and succeed online. You may be selling a physical product or you may be selling services like carpentry. Either way, you can do it all on Squarespace. Squarespace have built in e-commerce tools. You can scroll through a whole wide array of templates that match your style and match the look you're going for and then all you got to do is drag and drop your information in there your pictures your text and make it your own and you don't need to know how to do code to do all of that that's why i really like it and of course i like it because they sponsor our channel but jess and i also use squarespace to set up our own website scottbrowncarpentry.com so they have heaps of templates that look great you don't need to know how to do code you can set up your own domain name within squarespace as well and the drag and drop functionality makes it super easy. So it's pretty much a no brainer. But you don't have to take my word for it. Squarespace also offer a free trial, so you have nothing to lose. And then once you're ready to launch your own website, make sure you go to squarespace.com forward slash Scott Brown Carpentry, and then you can save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So the toilet window, and I'm gonna use this Gorilla Grip here. Set a little bit on the tenon. But you can't go crazy. If you put too much on the ends, you can actually pop out the tenon. Because everything's so tight, right? Um, it's waterproof, so it can withstand the elements. And it gives a nice clear seal, so when you have squeeze out, you know, it doesn't stain the wood. I actually managed to damage the corner of some of this, but... It's going to be painted, so... Not a problem. <laughs> Like a glove. The next sashes that are arriving will be for the kitchen window, which is what we're working on, right? That's the room we want to get done. Six left over. What's going on here, Jess? No. You're bathing your twigs. Yeah, they just seemed a bit dirty. And we're going to chuck them in the bottom of the planters and use like a concept called Hugel culture, which is just German for hill culture. But basically, the idea is you layer trunks and branches and sticks and then heaps of uh, leaf and greenery and nitrogen and then I think maybe some leaves and then topsoil and then compost and then straw and then you plant directly into it and the idea is that over time everything kind of breaks down and you don't have to spend all this money to fill those up with soil because that's a lot of soil and it's also a great way to get rid of the garden waste without having to pay for it. However it's best to use rotting logs which I don't have so I've been chatting with a biodynamic compost consultant her name's Blue Borage and she's in Auckland and she suggested that I soak the logs and the twigs like a seaweed fish fertilizer first and then put them in. So anyway, we need a good balance in the beds so that things actually grow. It might not work, in which case you will get to watch my failure, but unlike the renovation where every decision feels very serious and very permanent, if you mess up in the garden, you get to try again next year, so this week can be a bit more loosey-goosey. <laughs> None. No topsoil. That's the second place. Um, apparently this isn't the type of year, time of year to get topsoil. 
too wet apparently they have to screen it for stones and other things that are in it and when the soil is wet they can't do that I'm gonna have to move the van um, we'll get some compost while we're here and then we'll go back and see what we can do They're really just fancy compost bins. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Couldn't get any topsoil for four weeks, apparently, until uh, things get a bit drier. So yeah, compost bins. You weren't planning to plant anyway, were you? No, not until spring. The idea is that this should break down like compost and then we'll just chuck topsoil on top. However, I think we should still put more. I mean, these aren't even half full. A trailer is definitely something I'm thinking about. Since we moved in here, we use trailers all the time. Getting rid of things like this. And it's always surprising how much, or how quickly you fill up a skip bin like that. There's three cubic meters. Which, to give you an idea, that's like twice the amount of volume that those planter boxes take. But hey, we've got a kitchen to pay for. Also got to get some tools to help me build a kitchen, so I'm going to have to keep borrowing trailers like this. This is where I'm editing this week's exciting episode. It's so cold! It's so cold! Still editing? But check this out. Look how it looks after I've scraped the glue off. Huh? And this window isn't even going to be stained, this is going to be painted. And I've got to trim the ends off, they leave it long, but we'll do that later. I've got a whole window to build out of that. Check out the planters. You happy with your planters, Jess? I'm so happy. Yeah? I love them. I can sit on the side here, save my back. And hopefully all this plus topsoil when we get it means I have a thriving veggie garden. I kind of have an idea to do strawberries in this half. I've never grown strawberries before, but i got a lot of ideas. <laughs> <laughs> He's hoping it works. <laughs> and the plasterer is finished. Three coats and this morning he sanded it. Um, Troy and Matt sanded it and look at it. Thing of beauty. Painter arrives next week.